Welcome to PlayPianoToday.com. This is video number three of three, taken from the opening sections of the course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard. Page 7, and this section has a wild title. It's called the tetrachord plus a whole step. Now, the tetrachord is kind of a scary-sounding word. Sounds like maybe a dinosaur that would come and eat your house. But the tetrachord is simply a sequence of four notes. Tetra means four. So tetrachord plus a whole step on top would be actually five notes. We're going to use a pattern of five notes to build any chord. Let's go to the video, and I'll show you what I mean. Starting with the note C, I'm going to play a tetrachord plus a whole step, and I'm going to explain how it's built. One, two, three, four. There's the tetrachord. I'll explain how that's built in just a minute. And then a whole step on top. So the tetrachord plus a whole step is a sequence of five notes. Okay? Let's look at the distance between these intervals. Okay, between one and two is a whole step, right? Between these notes. Between two and three is a whole step between three and four, and this is the unique one. Between three and four is a half step, right? And between four and five is a whole step. So the pattern is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. I want you to say that with me, it's that important. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. All right, now I want you to get up and run around your house <laughs> saying whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. We're going to use this. Let me show you why this is so important. If you learn how to build a tetrachord plus a whole step on top, you can play the first, the third, and the fifth notes together, in this case C, E, and G. Guess what? You've got a major chord. Okay, and this case is built on C, so we'll call this a C major chord. Now, if you've had any experience with music at all, I know you've heard that term. Major and minor chords are the bread and butter of music. Anything above major and minor chords are really kind of color. Okay, major and minor chords are really the meat and potatoes. All right, so it looks pretty simple. Let's build it somewhere else. How about if we build the tetrachord plus a whole step on D? Okay, now, you've been running around your house singing whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, so you're going to get this quickly, right? Whole step, whole step, look at that, we've got a black and a white note, but we're not going to get hung up on appearances, right? We're going to talk about the substance or the distance between notes, so we've got whole step, whole step, half step, okay, between three and four, the notes or the fingers that are kind of hard to wiggle, that's where the half step goes, always. Okay, and then a whole step. So whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. One, three, and five together from that pattern. What do you have? It's built on D. It's a D major chord. Okay? You didn't have to memorize those note names. You just had to memorize the pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. The name of the pattern is the tetrachord plus a whole step. It's very simple. Let's build a few more, then we're going to go on to some music. Let's really put our minds to use here. How about a B flat major chord? Okay, we've got to go whole step, see that? B flat to C. Whole step, C to D. Half step, D to E flat. And a whole step, E flat to F. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, right? Play one, three, and five together. You've got a B flat major chord. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Run over to your neighbor's house and show them what a B-flat major chord is. I'd be very impressed. Okay, let's build one more, and then we're going to talk about the note names a little bit. Let's build an E-flat major chord. Okay, we're going to use the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. E-flat, F, G, A-flat, B-flat. Aren't you glad I don't have you memorize lists and lists of notes? And the construction of chords, they fill up a whole wall. All you got to remember is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, and you got it, right? So we've got E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. Now, this A flat right here, why didn't I call it G sharp? 
you're wondering, you're thinking this could be G sharp. It's a, it's a half step up to the right of G when I call it G sharp. But notice it's also a half step below A, right? Remember I told you sometimes notes have multiple personalities. It depends on what context they're being played in. This is exactly the case. Okay, E flat, F, G were the three notes at the beginning, right? So we've used up G already. So we can't use G sharp. Here's a cardinal rule I really want you to remember. And don't break this one, or you'll just be in a mass of confusion. Don't use any letter name more than once when you're building the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern. So E flat, F, G. We've already used G. So the only thing that's left to call this is A flat, right? And the last note on top of there was right here. Well, we can't call it A sharp because we've already used A and A flat, right? So we can call it B flat. So that's why notes are sometimes called different names, just to keep confusion to a minimum. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is a minor chord. If you've heard of major chords, I'm sure you've heard of minor chords. Now, minor chords are just a little different from major chords. This is how you build them. Let's start on D. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So do you notice the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern is still the same? First, we build a major chord. Okay, so... 1, 3, and 5 together, you've got a D major chord. You always want to build a major chord before you build a minor chord. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. Eventually, you know what? All these chords will become second nature to you, and you won't have to do the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern. But for now, build a major chord, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Now, to make that chord minor, simply take the third and lower it half a step, right? Listen to that. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I, I tend to gravitate towards minor chords, maybe. They're a little more mysterious, right? They have a little substance of mis mystery to them. So to build a major chord, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, I built E major. Drop the third a half step, you've got a minor chord. That's E minor. Now it's only been about 20 minutes, but so far we've already gone through the essence of music theory. We started by learning how to find any note name on the keyboard and how to make any of those notes sharp or flat. We turned around then and used those notes to build the basic building blocks of music, the half steps and the whole steps, which are used to put together the tetrachord plus a whole step pattern, which is used to build major chords, which are altered then to make minor chords. My goodness, that seems like a lot of information in 20 minutes. But here's the amazing part. The vast majority of musicians skip this step, and they don't understand the foundational music theory, which is really required if you don't want to just play chopsticks for the rest of your life. So let's go on. We're going to get right into the music now. I'm going to start teaching you the technique of using rhythmic patterns to play any song on the piano or the keyboard by ear. Here we go. This has been video section three of three, taken from the opening sections of the course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard. I hope you'll take a second and leave your comments. That's super helpful. Thanks for watching.